hundreds of names too difficult to pronounce, microscopic organisms are doing their part to clean up the Gulf oil spill. Ed Bauer is a bioremediation expert and professor of environmental engineering at Johns Hopkins University. Microbes are everywhere, basically. Very aquatic doesn't have microbes. So they're there sort of stable, humming along, so to speak. And then the food's there, the oil, but there are no nutrients. And then so once the nutrients and oil are put together with oxygen, then they're having a feast. I mean, they're really, oil to them is like sugar to us. So sure, the Coast Guard has directed dozens of skimmers to collect the spilled oil from the deep water horizon, and hundreds of crews are out mopping up what they can from the Gulf. But you should never underestimate the power of Mother Nature. Biodegradation is a very fast process for oil. If, if the right conditions are there, meaning there's fertilizer, nutrients, there's oxygen, and the microbes are pretty plentiful. There's a lot of different bacteria that can use oil as their food, and they can do it pretty quickly. Bauer says conditions in the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico help promote natural biodegradation. According to NOAA, that along with skimming, burning, and direct capture accounts for about 75 percent of the escaped oil. But oceanographer Randy McBride believes it's too early to tell what is actually going on in the Gulf. In some ways, we've lost control of the spill because it is so three-dimensional and no longer two-dimensional. It's very hard to track it and determine where the oil is. I think that through continued research and sampling, we're going to find out a lot more about the spill over time. McBride, who was a scientific consultant on the Exxon Valdez oil spill cleanup, says it could take months, years, even decades to understand the full impact of the Gulf oil spill. The reason, he says, may be the quantity of chemical dispersants used. And compared to the Exxon Valdez spill, it was a very much of a, a two-dimensional spill where the vast majority of the oil was on the surface of the water and on the shoreline. In the Gulf of Mexico, uh, there was uh, and is some oil on the, the surface and on the shoreline, but uh, it's also throughout the water column because of the dispersants. McBride says remote sensing techniques that look at the surface of the water are not going to detect all of the oil, which he says may eventually make its way into the northern Atlantic Ocean. And so through time, um, and it's already happened, is that I would imagine a certain amount of oil has been incorporated into the uh, the loop current and will be dispersed out into the Atlantic and towards, of all places, Great Britain and uh, Ireland. The good news is, no matter where it goes, oil-eating microbes will follow. It's dispersed a very, uh, and it's traveled great distances, but it, it will eventually biodegrade. I mean, the, the material that is dispersed in low molecular weight, Mother Nature is pretty good at, at, at handling uh, and purifying these kinds of, th that kind of compound. Mother Nature may have her work cut out for her. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration recently reported that of the 200 million barrels of oil that escape from the Deepwater Horizon, about 26 percent remains in the water. I'm VOA's Rebecca Ward for Going Green.